it's malfunctioning. Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today we will talk about how to add and subtract fractions. How to add and subtract fractions. Let's begin. For example, for example, if we are asked to add one eighth plus one sixth, one eighth plus one sixth. Well, the very first thing we need to do here is to make sure that they have the same denominator. They have the same denominator, which the mathematician will call it, with, with the, which the mathematician will call as common denominator. They have to have common denominator. They have to have the same denominator. Now, common denominator does not mean that you can make a. For example, for example, we could divide eight. We could divide eight by twenty-four thousand, and we could divide six by twenty-four thousand evenly. And that will make it common denominator. But what we are looking for is the least common denominator. Least common denominator. The question is how can we find quickly the least common denominator of 8 and 6? For example, 8 times 6 is 48. 48 would do the job also. 48 will do the job nicely. But 48 is not the least common denominator. Here it will not do you any harm. You still find the answer. You still get the, get where you want to go. But once the problem becomes a little bit more problems become more, a little bit more complicated. And if you don't take the least common denominator, you will see that you will end up creating a lot more work for yourself than there is a need for. Do you understand? How do we find out the least common denominator of 8 and 6? This is how we do it. Put down 8, put down 6, and start dividing it by the common factor. The common factor of 8 and 6 are 2. When you divide 8 by 2, we get 4. When you divide 6 by 2, we get 3. And that's it. We're done. These 4 and 3 no longer have any common factor. And there you go. 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24. Turns out that the least, the lowest possible number that we can find, which is evenly divisible by both 8 and 6, is 24. 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 3 is 24. What we need is a common denominator of 24. The question is, how can I make this 20? How can we convert this 8 into a 24? Well, that's very simple. Take that fraction 1 over 8 and multiply it by 1. We're going to multiply it by 1. And of course, if you multiply some quantity by 1, the quantity does not change. It's the 1 eighth that we have is still 1 eighth. We're simply multiplying it by 1, except, except our 1 takes a very special form. We write our 1 as 3 over 3. Why 3 over 3? Because now at the bottom we have 8 times 3. 8 times 3, which is 24. And 3 times 1 is just going to be 3. Now we have to do the same thing here. We have to somehow convert this 6 into a into a 24. 6 times 4 is 24. Let's multiply 1 over 6 also by 1, except this time we're going to write our 1 as 4 over 4. And when we do that, we find that here also we end up with a, with a denominator of 24. 6 times 4 is 24. And here we have 1 times 4 is 4. Now that they have the common denominator, we are done. All we have to, all we have to do is simply add them up, and we end up with 3 plus 4, which is 7 over 24. That's all. That's what it is. Don't make it mechanical. Try to understand the logic behind it. Try to understand the reasoning behind it. Let's do one more. Let's do number two. Number two is two third. Two third plus seven twelve. Now here. The least common denominator that we'll find is actually happens to be right there. 12 is the smallest number that you're going to find. The least common denominator actually means, the least common denominator actually means that it's the lowest possible number that you can find that you that is evenly divisible by both 3 and 12. The smallest number that is divisible by both 3 and 12 is 12. So somehow we have to convert this bottom part, this 3, somehow convert that into a 12. How do we do that? Well, if you were to multiply the 3 by 4, it will become 12. But we can't just leave it like that. We cannot just divide the bottom by 4. If we just divide bottom by 4 and do nothing to the top, it's no longer the same fraction. We need to divide 2 thirds by 4 over 4. 4 over 4 is 1. It doesn't change anything. So here we have 4 times 3 is 12. And here we have 4 times 2, which is 8. 
and now we have 7 over 8, 7 over 12, they have the same denominator. Since they have the same denominator, we simply have to add up the numerator. 8 plus 7 is 15. 8 plus 7 is 15 over 12. And we can leave it like this. The top, the top happens to be more than the bottom. When the top is happens to be more than the bottom, when top, when top is more than bottom, when top is more than the bottom, it's called improper fraction. This is an improper fraction. We have to do something with it. 12 over 15, a uh, 15 over 12 can be written as 12 over 12, 12 over 12 plus 3 over 12. 12 over 12 is just 1, so we end up with 1 and 3 12. We can leave the way that one is either because 3 over 12, they, are both, they have both have common denominator, common, common factor. 3 and 12 have common factor, we need to divide top and bottom by 3. 3 12 is same as 1 quarter. So the final answer is 1 and 1 quarter. That's our final answer. 1 and 1 quarter. Let's do number 3. Let's do one. number 3. We couldn't have left it like that, and we couldn't have just left it like that, 1 and 3, 12, we have to go all the way there. That's the simplest form. This is called the mi mixed fraction. It's mixed fraction because it has a mixture of whole number and a fraction. Number 3. 5, 8 plus 7, 6. This is number 3. Oh, I think we did the 8 and 6 before, didn't we? We did the 8 and 6 in the number 1, and we know that the common, the least common denominator for, of 8 and 6 is not 48, it is 12. Somehow we have to convert this into 12. Let's do that. Multiply top and bottom by 3, and multiply here top and bottom by 4. So now we end up with 3 times 5, which is 15, and here we have 3 times 8, which is 24. I'm going to raise that 3 here. I don't want you to confuse. I don't want you to get confused. There you go. And here we have 7 times 4, which is 7 4 is 28 over 24. Let's continue. Let's continue. 28 plus 15, 28 plus 15 is 43. It's 43 over 24. We can't leave it like this because 43 is more than 24. We have to convert this into a mixed fraction. So this can be written as 24 over 24 plus, if you subtract 24 from 43, you're going to get 19. And since 19 is a prime number, we know it cannot be reduced anymore. That's it, we are done. So 24 over 24 is just 1. So it's 1 and 19, 24. 1 and 19, 24. Let's do one more. Number 4. Number four. And that one was the previous one. We have seven six minus five eight. I do not know why I picked all the ones with six and eight. That was that was a bit silly of me. That was not a very smart thing to do, because now they all have the common least common denominator of 24. So we need a 24 here. Let's multiply top and bottom by 4. Let's multiply top and bottom by 3. Seven times four is 28 minus 15 over 24. 28 minus 28 minus 15. 28 minus 15, we know 30 minus 15 is 15. 30 minus 15 is 15, therefore 28 minus 15 should be 2 less than that, which is 13. And since 13 is less than 24, and since 13 is a prime number, we know that is the, that is the simplest form that it will, it will take. It cannot be any simpler than that. It cannot be reduced anymore. It cannot take any simpler form. This is it, 13 over 24. Let's do one more. Number 5. 
You should be doing this thing on your own. Let's do, do the number five yourself. Pause the video and do it yourself. Here we go. Three minus seven and one third. Three minus seven and one third. Do it yourself. I insist. Pause the video and do it yourself. Well, three minus seven and one third is quite straightforward. Three minus seven is negative four. Three minus seven is negative four. So it's just negative four and one seven. But you see, three minus one seven is no different than this thing is no different than negative seven one third plus three. In which case, negative seven and plus three is negative four. Negative four and one third is the answer. Let's do one more. Number six. Number six. In number six we have four, four twelve minus five twenty eight minus nine thirty six. Now listen very carefully, okay? Pause the video. I insist that you pause the video and do it yourself. Do it right now. I'm going to give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds. Okay, here we go. When we are doing, when we are adding and subtracting fractions, listen very carefully. When we are adding and subtracting fractions, and if you find a situations where a fraction that is given to you is not in its most reduced form, then it's always a good idea to reduce the fraction as much as you can before you go hog wild. Before you go hog wild. Yes, it's a mathematical term. Before we waste our time, before we waste our time to try to figure out the least common denominator of 12, 20, and 36, which will be a hell of a job to do, it will take quite a lot of time, especially had it been a real exam, it will take an inordinate amount of time. It will end up taking an inordinate amount of time. We don't want to roll those things. If there is a chance to reduce the fraction, do it. For example, 4 over 12, of course, is simply one third. That's not what I meant to do here. That's not that's not what it was supposed to be. That's not what it was supposed to be. Let me change the problem. It's six over twelve. I need to fix my notes as well, because otherwise, otherwise, it will not have the dramatic ending that I want. And of course, you know after having watched my video for a while, you know that we have the flair for the dramatics. I made a boo-boo. So let's start again. 6 over 12 can be reduced as half. 5 over 12, 5 over 20 can be reduced as one quarter. And 9 over 36, 9 for the 36, 9 for the 36. 9 over 36 is simply one quarter incognito. 9 over 9 over 36, 9 over 36 is 1 quarter incognito. So what do we have here? We have 1 half minus a quarter minus a quarter, that's just big fat zero. The answer is big fat zero. A half minus a quarter minus a quarter is, is zero. Let's learn these two words, inordinate and incognito. It's just a fluke that they both happen to start with I, so I don't, I don't have to look at the two different cards. Look under I and we'll, I'll tell you exactly when we learn these words. Inordinate amount of time, it, I said. Day number 72. Day 72. And incognito simply means to be in disguise. Incognito. I know we learned it. Day number 42. Oh, what do you know? Vocabulary. Day 42. If you're interested in vocab, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, and if you happen to be preparing for any of these tests, ACT, SAT, TES, GMAT, or GRE, just type in the respective test name. Just for example, GRE vocabulary words day number 72, or SAT vocabulary words day number 42, and the video will pop right up. Watch the video and learn the words. Incognito, which simply means to be in disguise. 936 is simply one quarter in disguise. Incognito. If you do not do this part here, if you do not reduce them in the simplest possible form, and if you start taking the, if you start wasting your time right from the very beginning, as I said, if you go hog wild without realizing that they can be reduced, 
you will end up taking an inordinate amount of time. You will end up taking unreasonable amount of time. You will end up taking excessive amount of time. And in the real exam, you don't have the luxury to be so 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 damn silly. Do you understand? Take advantage of if you if you see a situations where the fraction can be reduced, take advantage of it. Let's do one more. Number seven. Number seven. Number seven, we have 12 over 18 minus 3 ninth minus 4 12. What do you notice? Do you notice anything? Of course you notice something. They can all be reduced. Let's reduce them, shall we? 12 over 6, 12 over 18, if you divide top and bottom by 6, we'll end up with 2 third minus, this is going to be 1 third. And 4 over 12 is on the third. So it's 2 third minus a third minus a third. It's a big fat zero. What do you know? What do we know? Let's do one more, shall we? Number 8. Number 8. Fifteen minus four twenty-fifth. Four twenty-fifth. Well, what do you notice? Four twenty-fifth cannot be reduced. That will have to be left alone. But this thing can be reduced. And trust me, if you reduce it, it will make your life easier. Instead of trying to figure out the least common denominator of fifteen and twenty-five, it's much easier to figure out the least common denominator of five and twenty-five. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. If we divide top and bottom by 3, 6 has 2 3's and 15 has how many 3's? 15 has 5 3's. So it ends up with 2 fifth. It ends up as 2 fifth minus 4 25th. And that is much easier scenario to deal with than what we were given in the beginning. All we have to do is convert this into 25 and we are done. We have a 25 here. How do we convert 5 into a 25? Multiply top and bottom by 2 or multiply top and bottom by 5. Multiply top and bottom by 5. And now we have 5 times 5 which is 25 at the bottom. And here we have 5. 5 times 2 which is 10 at the top. And this thing stays the same. Minus 4 25th. That's it. We are done. 4 minus 10 minus 4 over 25th. 25, 25 is just going to be 6 over 25. The answer is 6 over 25. Now what we're going to learn in tomorrow's video what we're going to learn in tomorrow's video is if we are given a fraction, if we are given, if we are given a fraction like this, six over twenty-five, and if you were to, if you were asked, what percentage is that exactly? What is the percentage form of six over twenty-five? Will you be able to do that like that? And that's what we're going to learn tomorrow. We're going to learn how to convert a given fraction into its either its exact percentage or an approximate percentage of a given fraction. We'll learn that tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.